There we go. And we'll get started in just a moment. All right, I think we wanna make the most out of everybody's time today. So let's go ahead and get kicked off. Um, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for PowerFlex's webinar today, Funding Focus San Diego. I'm Annie Gala, head of, of the marketing communications team at PowerFlex, and your sort of behind the scenes host for today. I'm joined by our speakers, Anara Mohammed, uh, Emma Chanel, Janelle Lindstrom, and Alex Kaufman. This webinar will be recorded for Power PowerFlex's proprietary use and we'll make it available to participants afterwards. This presentation will last about 30 minutes, leaving 10 to 15 minutes at the end for attendee questions. The question function has been enabled and participants can submit questions throughout the presentation and we'll address those at the end. Um, so without further ado, Inara, I'm going to hand it over to you to start today's webinar. Thank you so much, Annie. Hi, everyone. My name is Inara Mohammed, and I live, I lead the incentives team here at PowerFlex. I live in Sacramento. Um, we're excited for those of y'all who have joined and are interested to adopt our EV charging solutions at your companies and your organizations. Um, we feel really excited to introduce y'all to funding opportunities that will ultimately reduce your costs to make EV charging available and accessible. So today I will spend a little bit of time talking about PowerFlex, um, introducing y'all to some of our product offerings, and then we will cover programs that are very specific to the San Diego area. For those of y'all who may have pro projects located around San Diego, but not directly in San Diego, we'll also cover some opportunities that you can still take advantage of. We'll have some time for questions at the end, and if we run out of time, you're always welcome to reach out to PowerFlex at sales at powerflex.com to learn more. So I want to start by telling y'all a little bit more about PowerFlex, particularly what we offer to help you reach your carbon goals. PowerFlex is a clean technology solutions company making the transformation to carbon-free electrification and transportation possible through EV charging, solar, storage, and an adaptive intelligent energy management system called PowerFlex X. We help everyone from property development, sustainability and operations teams to fleet managers, IT professionals and drivers turn their sites into green energy hubs. So how do we do this? PowerFlex has a suite of solutions that include commercial solar, energy storage, microgrids and EV charging. PowerFlex also has an intelligent energy management software called PowerFlex X that helps our customers monitor and optimize their on-site energy systems. PowerFlex is your all-in-one provider from everything from site validations, development, construction, all the way through operations and maintenance. And the best part is when you work with PowerFlex, you have one point of contact for all of your clean tech solutions and products. PowerFlex manages the project from conducting site visits to recommending appropriate solutions to actually developing and engineering the right fit for your site. We then manage the entire construction process. And once the site is live, we provide various asset management and maintenance services. We're here as your partner to make sure that the project fits your needs and all you have to do is press the on button. I'd like to highlight a few of the types of customers that we've been fortunate to deliver intelligent clean energy solutions to. As most of y'all are located in San Diego, you may be familiar with UC San Diego, the Cushman and Wakefield properties, and of course the airport. And for those of y'all who are unfamiliar with PowerFlex's history, PowerFlex is majority owned by EDF Renewables. The EDF group holds over 70 years of experience in energy and over 35 years of experience in renewable energy. When you focus specifically on EV charging, which y'all are here today to learn about, PowerFlex is the number one provider of large scale EV charging solutions. And we are the fourth largest public level two charging station network in the US. We are proud to have installed over 15,000 chargers nationwide and counting. 
So now let's dive into some of the incentive programs in the San Diego area that have made our shared mission more affordable. As we go through each highlighted program, the incentive coordinator who works very closely with program administrators will talk about the program's incentive offerings, eligibility, and what the application process looks like. Please note that the programs that we'll be discussing often cover different scopes ranging from make ready programs to hardware only programs. All of the funding programs, even when stacked with others, will fund different percentages of your project's eligible costs. In no scenario can you exceed 100% of eligible costs. So making a profit off of any of the programs is not allowed. As part of the services we offer at PowerFlex, our incentive coordinators will work with the program administrators to manage the incentive applications. So without further ado, I'd like to pass it on to Janelle Lindstrom to introduce our first program. Hi everyone, my name is Janelle Lindstrom. I am one of the incentive coordinators based in San Diego here at PowerFlex. And I coordinate the Power Your Drive program with San Diego Gas and Electric. So just jumping into the program overview, the Power Your Drive program does offer up to 100% in incentives to cover all electrical infrastructure and charger equipment costs for commercial customers in sdg &E territory. The program is split up into three different offerings uh, covering workplaces, apartments, condos, and fleets. The program does place a heavy emphasis on supporting underserved communities. So 50% of the sites selected for a workplace in apartments and condos will be in an underserved community. So sdg &E defines this as an area that meets one or more of the criteria in California Assembly Bill 841. So this includes certain disadvantaged and low income areas and federally recognized tribal communities. Um, so if you look to the right, that is a map um, depicting all the interserved communities in San Diego County. Um, you can also find more details on the scg &E website. So currently phase one applications for workplace and apartments and condo customers are closed. However, phase two is slated to open up next month in June. Um, when the program reopens, selection will prioritize workplaces, especially those in underserved communities. So if you have any projects in mind that fall under this criteria, we really, really encourage you to apply um, and take advantage of that funding available. Um, so Fleets works a little bit differently. So the application window for that offering is still open until November 1st. So we still have a little bit of more time there. Um, however, scg &E will be sunsetting the entire Power Your Drive program in 2025, um, and they've announced no plans for reopening. So if you are interested in applying, this is your last chance, um, feel free to reach out to our team and we'll be more than happy to walk you through that application process. So scg &E provides different ownership options for the infrastructure and chargers at your project. Um, in other words, you can either choose um, to own your own infrastructure and chargers or have scg &E owned infrastructure and chargers. Um, there are differences in funding for each option. Um, essentially, scg and &E will provide a rebate for whatever component you wish to own, build, pay for, and maintain. Um, so just as a quick example, option two, which is typically our most popular option, um, this will be customer-owned infrastructure, customer-owned chargers. In this situation, scg and &E will pay, construct, and own all the utility side infrastructure up to the meter, and you, the customer, will own and pay for all the customer side infrastructure and charging stations, um, and you will be receiving a rebate up to 100% for those costs. Um, each ownership option comes with its own pro set of pros and cons, um, so it really just comes down to your site needs and your priorities. Um, but if you have any questions about the different options offered, you can always reach out to our team. Um, we'll be more than happy to offer that insight for you. So next slide. Um, so let's just jump into funding. So for apartments and condos and workplace funding, scg and &E will provide up to $18,000 per port. And this is designed to cover all your project costs, including utility and customer side infrastructure and charging hardware. So there are different caps for the charger rebate, which are all encompassed in that 18,000 per port package. Um, if you look to the right for apartments and condos, you can receive up to 100% of the charger cost up to $5,000 for an L2 single port charger. And for workplaces, you can receive up to 100% of the charger cost up to $2,000 for an L2 charger. Um, in addition to that, apartments and condos have special access to a networking and maintenance rebate. Um, the networking rebate is up to $3,000 per port or your actual software costs if lower than that. 
um, and the maintenance rebate is just a straight $5,000 per port. Um, and these rebates are paid out as a lump sum upfront along with that um, up to $18,000 per port covered. Um, so as you can see, the program is very, very generous in their funding. Um, many of our projects have been able to offset a large proportion of their costs through this program. Um, the one thing to note is for all offerings across apartments, condos, workplace, and fleets, um, sites are limited to 50 chargers. Um, this is still massive amount of funding. We've seen our customers unlock upwards of over a million dollars in total funding for just one site. Um, so really, really great funding opportunity um, can get tons of savings through this program. Uh, next slide. So Fleece operates a little bit differently. Um, fcg &E will cover up to 80% of your customer side make ready infrastructure costs. Um, they also offer additional charger rebates, but those are only reserved for transit agencies, school districts, and fleet sites located in a disadvantaged community, excluding Fortune 1000 companies. If you are eligible for that rebate, the rebate covers up to 50% of your EV charging station costs up to a cap. Um, so if you look to the right, that is a map um, found on the scg &E website um, of all the disadvantaged communities in the county. And below that, the table of the maximum rebate amounts you can expect to receive for that um, EV charger rebate. Um, the caps are structured a little bit differently. They are based off of power output of your chargers instead. Um, so another unique aspect about our fleet's offering is that you can stack funding with other local, state, and federal incentive programs to help maximize savings for your projects. This is an important distinction to remember, um, considering the apartments, condos, and workplace offerings do not allow for stacking. Next slide, please. Okay, so for a typical customer timeline, PowerFlex will submit an interest form to scg &E on your behalf, um, just containing basic project information and also stating which infrastructure option you'd like to proceed with. From there, an scg &E representative will reach out, determine our project's eligibility. Once we clear that initial check, our team will work with scg &E in creating designs and pricing for the project. Um, once all that is done and all parties established and agree on the project scope, scg &E will provide the participation agreement, which will be signed by you, and then we'll proceed to construction. So one thing that's great about the Power Drive program is that scg &E will actually work around your schedule to begin construction. So whether you want to start work immediately or hold off a few months to a more convenient time, scg &E allows us to schedule the installation for whatever timeline works best for you. So once construction is complete, PowerFlex will collect and submit final documentation on your behalf, handle all of that for you. And around this time, scg &E will also do a final site verification, ensure everything's good, charges are turned on and operational. After that, scg &E will issue final project approval, which can take up 250 days. Um, and after that, payment will be issued to you within 30 days after that approval. So after construction is completed, scg and &E does ask us to submit usage data for the chargers at their request over a five-year period. Um, scg and &E just uses this data um, to track EV utilization and adoption trends. Um, but rest assured, PowerFlex will also handle those data reporting requests on your behalf, um, and we'll ensure that we're in compliance with our obligations to the program even after your project is complete. So that about wraps up the Power Drive program. Again, phase two is reopening next month in June. Um, so this will be your last chance to get your foot in the door since the program will be sunsetting in 2025. So if you are interested, please, please reach out. Um, we'll get you all lined up and ready to apply once that window reopens. And now I will hand it off to Emma who will go over communities and church. Awesome, thanks Chanel. Hi everyone, um, my name is Emma Chanel. I am another incentive expert here at PowerFlex, um, based out of San Diego for right now, but as of next week, we'll be based out of Arizona. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and dive into Communities in Charge. So this is a pretty well-known program because it is cal open California-wide. So the program is currently closed as we speak, but it's third cycle. We'll be opening June 11th, so just a few weeks away. This project is, or this program is open to level two projects only. Um, and one of the great things about this program is pretty much any site type is eligible. So all public and private sites across California are eligible. That's including workplaces, multi, 
um, family dwellings, hospitals, public transit hubs, and more. Um, one of the kind of key requirements about this program is that all chargers installed must be shared use. So all that means is it, it really applies mostly to those multi-unit dwellings. Um, if you're installing a charger, it needs to be open to the entire facility. You can't install a charger dedicated to one specific unit or a section of units. It needs to be shared use across um, the property, but that doesn't mean it needs to be publicly accessible. So it can still be limited to just employee use or resident use. Um, so a little bit about the application process for this program. So when you submit an application, you're placed, your application is placed into one of three tiers. And then following that tier placement, it will be assigned um, a certain level of points. So the tiers are probably the key part here. Um, tiers one through three are going to be based on project readiness. So ideal applications to be in that tier one status are going to already have an issued permit. So this is a little different than a lot of incentive programs nationwide, where typically permitting comes after you've been funded an award, et cetera. Um, but Communities in Charge really wants to see projects that are ready up front. So if you look over on the bottom right hand side of the slide right now, this gives you a little bit of breakdown of what the specific tiers mean. Tier one, having an issued building permit. Tier two, having at least applied for a permit. And then tier three, you're still in that preliminary design stage. You haven't applied for a permit just yet. Now, um, historically, in cycle number one of Communities in Charge, only tier one applications ended up getting funded. And um, tier two, which closed just this past December, and unfortunately, those applications have not been awarded just yet. So I can't speak to if those also only funded tier one or if a few tier two will make it in. We're hopeful to kind of hopefully see some um, more competitiveness there. But um, super key part about this program, you really want to try and have that issued building permit, which is where PowerFlex can play a really helpful role. Um, we understand this program. We know how the process works. Um, and we have design and engineers and project managers who've worked in AHJs all across California who can really help to push um, and get that permit before the end of the cycle is closed, which it's not noted here, but the cycle will end August 9th. So you have around two months already. And then kind of the other portion of the application part is the points assigned. These points, you'll see a rubric here on the right-hand side, are just based on if your site is located within a DAC, a low income community, has tribal land status, things along those lines, which feel free to reach out to us um, and we can kind of help determine what point count your uh, potential application might fall under and so forth. Alrighty, next slide, please. Okay, so a little bit about the specific funding. So first I wanna touch on um, the different port maximums and minimums that are required. This is this varies by site type. So a, for a workplace, which the program considers a workplace as, you know, a work, a place of work, but that is installing chargers with preference to employees. So that could mean charging is only open to employees, um, or that could be less strict. And that could just mean that um, maybe you're charging a lower rate for employees, or maybe some of the chargers installed are employee only, the rest are publicly accessible or shared use, et cetera. So for workplaces, the program requires you install at least four ports and a maximum of 40. Uh, multifamily housing, same count, four minimum ports, 40 maximum ports, and then all other site types. So um, parking facilities, community hubs, things like that, it's going to be a four port minimum, but then a 20 port maximum. So the base incentive amount you're looking at with communities in charge is going to be $3,500 per port or 75% of eligible costs, whichever ends up coming out to be the lesser value. So um, to kind of put things in perspective, if you're a workplace looking to install that maximum of 40 ports, you'd be looking at around 140,000 in incentives baseline. Um, you'll see on the funding chart to the right, if your site um, 
is for a tribe works for a tribal government tribal entity or is an organization serving tribal communities you can get that additional basically double that base incentive um quick real quickly for muds you'd be looking at 280,000 in incentives if you installed that 40 port maximum um, and then for all other site types installing the 20 port maximum you'd be looking at around 70,000 in incentives so I wanted to point out again on that funding chart, there's additional rebates available for um, projects related to tribal groups. And then also that multifamily housing projects get that double base incentive as well. All righty, next slide, please. Um, and I just quickly wanted to highlight with communities in charge, um, the eligible costs um, list is extremely good for this program. So sometimes, um, you don't always see every single one of these items covered under an incentive. An eligible cost, for those who may not know, basically means what you're allowed to use that incentive or rebate money for. So um, this program will allow you to use that $140,000 or $280,000 for the chargers themselves, the design and engineering, transformers and panels, the actual installation, um, utility service upgrades, which is a big one. You don't usually find those um, with programs outside of ones being offered by the utility themselves, um, networking, operation maintenance, et cetera. So really awesome eligible cost list. And again, feel free to reach out to us if you wanna see this broken down a little bit more um, and see how this program could really help um, offset your project costs. Alrighty, next slide, please. And I've kind of already touched on a little bit of this. You'll see that a lot of these program timelines are fairly similar, but the big standout point for communities in charge is gonna be that upfront work with the permitting. So PowerFlex will work with you to come up with a design charger count that best fits you and your site's needs. Um, PowerFlex will complete the permitting process for that project ahead of time. And then we will submit that application with that issued permit or permitting application. Then um, we will wait for communities in charge to come back to us with a conditional incentive award. We will also take care of any kind of in-between coordination. A lot of the times incentive programs may have questions, clarifying questions, things they want to address with the application. Um, and we handle all of that kind of back and forth for you. Um, but once we receive a conditional incentive award, we will then move forward with mobilizing for the project. So once the project is under construction throughout that process, we will also help manage collecting any of any necessary final documentation that's required to send back to the incentive program. So final inspections, um, invoices, things like that. And then once the construction is finally complete, we'll submit all that incentive documentation. The program will review that, we'll coordinate any clarifying questions that may come up um, and then the program will pay the incentive out to the incentive recipient. And then PowerFlex will continue to support on this project for the next three years by reporting data on those chargers that were installed to meet the communities in charge data reporting needs. So yeah, that is communities in charge. Like I said, upcoming cycle, June 11th. So <laughs> just please reach out to us. Um, since there is a lot of upfront work involved with that permitting, the sooner the better for this program. Thank you so much, Emma. And thank you so much, Janelle, for talking about stg and &E. We'll now spend just a few minutes talking about some other programs that you can take advantage of if you have projects that are located right outside of San Diego that may not fit stg and &E or communities in charge. I'll hand it right back over to Emma. Alrighty. So I also oversee our participation in all things SCE Charge Ready. So some of you may be familiar um, with this program. A little, I wanna say maybe two years, a year and a half ago, um, Charge Ready came out with several different offerings for new construction projects, infrastructure projects, turnkey, um, but a lot of those have been closed for a while now. But semi-recently, they just relaunched their charging infrastructure 
rebate offering. So this is extremely competitive as they are only funding, I want to say around 2000 ports. Um, so closing or funds, the program itself will close when all funds are exhausted. And I estimate that coming fairly soon. I want to say early to mid July. So just a couple weeks away. Um, a little bit about this program. So it's not specifically a rebate. It's more of an incentive. So um, SCE is going to design, construct, install all the necessary infrastructure on both the utility and customer side. So they're looking for projects that are installing level two chargers only, and they're looking for kind of bigger scale projects. So they're requiring a minimum of 20 ports um, to be installed. So they're kind of looking at a variety. If you have 20 ports, 40 ports, 60 ports, even up to 80 ports, um, they'll be interested in seeing that project. And um, as far as site eligibility goes, non-residential sites and MUDs are eligible. So kind of the whole broad spectrum excluding fleets. So workplaces, hospitals, airports, et cetera. Um, just a few additional requirements. So they are asking that the site be located within a DAC. You'll find that map over here on the right-hand side um, and if there's ever any confusion with that or you'd like to verify um, several sites, um, DAC status, please feel free to reach out to us and we can kind of help with that. Um, you will need to install a dedicated meter with the project. You'll need to enroll in one of SCE's demand response programs. And then you'll also need to agree to operate and maintain the chargers for 10 years. So they have one of the longest um, operate in maintenance terms, but PowerFlex will be there right by your side to help um, support through that term with data reporting and maintenance, et cetera. All righty, next slide. So the funding, um, as I mentioned, this isn't exactly a rebate, so you're not going to be getting a check in the mail for this. This is going to be more of SCE doing a lot of the work and covering those costs um, for you. So. As I mentioned, SE is going to cover and do all of the work associated with preparing the utility and customer side of your site to install chargers. So you will be responsible for the purchase of the chargers themselves. And currently, there's no um, extra rebates available for the physical chargers, networking, or maintenance. All righty, next slide. All righty, so the timeline for this one. Um, PowerFlex will work with you to determine kind of a preliminary design that would work best for your site. We will prepare the SCE application with that kind of preliminary site layout, showing our your preferences of where you would like the chargers to go, et cetera. Um, SCE's turnaround time is usually pretty great. So at most 60 days would pass before we hear back from them. Um, and SCE's process, given the magnitude of in infrastructure work that has to take place, they will come back, approve our application, and we will begin the conceptual design process where SCE will work with you to schedule a site walk. They'll come evaluate the site. They'll take into consideration your preferences on the installation layout and then what's really possible on the more technical side of things. And they will prepare a conceptual design and share that with yourselves and us. We can review, walk you through what their design means. Um, and basically we'll get to a point where we approve the design that SCE has prepared. And then that will kind of be the trigger to begin the actual construction. So SCE completes their work. We stay in constant communication with SCE. That way we can be prepared to immediately get on site as soon as their work is done to complete the installation. Of course, along the way, we're collecting any and all final documentation needed for this incentive program. And then we will submit that incentive program information. And then, um, as I said, you won't see it on this last stage. There's nothing actually getting paid out to you, um, but you'll see a lot of markdown. I mean, 100% of cost markdown on the infrastructure work. Um, and then PowerFlex will continue to support in this project by reporting data to SCE for the next 10 years for those, for those chargers installed. So, already, next slide. 
we'll just keep going with the SCE incentive. So another offering that's closing really soon um, out of SCE Charge Ready is their DC fast charging program. So this is another pretty competitive program with the cycle ending in just a few days on May 31st. So this is a little similar to the level two program, um, but also a little different. So like the last program, they're gonna cover the utility side infrastructure, um, but this time they're only gonna cover a portion of the costs of the customer side, but they are offering a rebate for the actual charging equipment. So um, they're looking for projects with a minimum of two charging units, each with two ports, so four ports total. Um, and each of those chargers need to needs to have one CCS and one CHAdeMO or NACS connector. We can help talk you through what all of that means, what charger options are available. Um, this program is open to all non-residential site types, um, so workplaces, parking lots, et cetera. And then a few additional requirements. So they're really preference, preferencing applications um, with projects that are gonna be publicly accessible. So that doesn't mean 24 seven, 365 days out of the year. Um, basically SCE kind of defines publicly accessible as within a reasonable amount of time throughout the week. So seven days a week, eight hours a day, they could be accessible to the public, just kind of normal operating hours. Um, but they, they will see applications that ha aren't that publicly accessible. Um, they're just putting preference to those. Um, similar to the last program, you'll need to install a dedicated meter with this project. You'll want to enroll in one of SCE's demand respo response programs. And this program also has that 10-year operation and maintenance requirement. All righty, next slide. So um, the funding for this, as I mentioned, SCE is going to cover 100% of the costs associated with the utility side infrastructure work. Um, now, for the customer side, they are just going to offset a portion of the costs to do this. Now, SCE is not advertising or putting a specific number to this right now. This is going to be determined on a site-by-site -site basis um, after they complete a site walk. Um, but one of the great things about this program is they are offering, on top of all the infrastructure work, a charger rebate. So if your project site is located within a DAC, which that map I've presented again on the right here, you and this excludes Fortune 1000 companies, you could receive $40,200 per charger that you install. And then all other sites outside of a DAC, including Fortune 1000 companies, you'd be looking at getting around $10,050 per charger. Alrighty, next slide. All right, so this process timeline for the DC Fast Charger program is pretty similar to the level two program for SCE. Um, there is a little bit of additional upfront work, however, so um, as always, PowerFlex will help come up with a preliminary design and project plan that best fits your site. And then PowerFlex, while they prepare the application for SCE, is also going to complete these very specific and detailed design files that SCE requires for this program. So once all of those are completed, we'll submit the application. Within 30 to 60 days, we'll hear back from SCE. And the rest of the process is very similar to the level two program we'll, we'll, where we will go through that conceptual design process with them. Um, once we come up with a design that you and PowerFlex agree on with SCE, we will approve that. And then we'll move right into the construction work, SCE completing their end, PowerFlex moving in to complete the actual installation. We submit final documentation for the incentive. The program approves our final documentation. And then if you were to get that um, charger rebate, SCE would pay that out to you to the rebate recipient via check. The rest would all just be cost coverage. Um, and then PowerFlex would continue to support for the next 10 years by reporting data on those chargers to SCE. Alrighty, so yeah, highlights of SCE, um, this DC fast charger program closing in just a few days. So if you have a project 
right now in the works or you're ready to jump on it, um, please, please reach out to us. And then as far as the level two, we have a little bit more time on that. Um, so please reach out if you want to determine um, if you're in that DAC, if we could make 20 ports work at your site, you'd be amazed at what we can do with our adaptive load management. And um, yeah, so please reach out. Thank you so much, Emma. So as you all know, lots of great funding available in both SCE service territory and also sdg &E service territory for those of y'all who have San Diego program projects um, that can take advantage of these programs. I know we're running out of time, so I want to really quickly cover just a couple other opportunities that we didn't get to cover in depth. Um, if you have projects that may be eligible for these, please, please reach out to us. We're more than willing to give you more information. Um, if you have projects in Anaheim Public Utilities, they're offering rebates for level two chargers and um, for schools and low income MUDs, they're offering additional funding. The program is currently closed, um, but might reopen. And the same thing goes for the South, uh, the South Coast Air Quality Management District. This is a grant that's currently closed, but might reopen. Um, for those of y'all who are interested in installing DC fast chargers, the Golden State Priority Project allows DC fast chargers um, to be installed and funds up to $100,000 per connector. This is a California-wide program that's currently closed, um, but we are expecting the next cycle to be announced soon. And lastly, for those who have level two and DC fast chargers installed at your sites or will have installed at your sites, certain chargers are eligible to participate in the low carbon fuel standard program. Um, and this is overseen by the California Air and Resource Board. So you're able to receive credits and sell them into this cap and trade market. So once again, if you have opportunities um, that PowerFlex can help you take advantage of and help you save money on us at sales at powerflex.com. That about wraps up our Funding Focus San Diego webinar. Um, we have a few questions and a chance to only offer about two or three, um, only answer about two or three. Uh, so I will read the question out loud and then um, I'll pass it on to, to whoever can answer. Um, so our first question is, does PowerFlex only work in San Diego? Um, I can help answer that. Um, as you saw, as part of our webinar, we not only provide solutions in the San Diego area, we work without, uh, within California, within the United States. Um, we are a nationwide EBSC provider along with our solar and storage solutions. So if you have projects located in California, if you have projects located in Nevada, if you have projects located in South Dakota, feel free to reach out to us um, and we'll find a way. Oh, I think Anar got disconnected. Um, I think one other question that came through was how can we keep Eight. track? Oh, can you hear me? Yes, you went out for a second. I was just gonna answer Thank one of the you. other questions about um, how you can keep track of the different incentive offerings and keep up with all of these funding opportunities. So um, okay. one of the best ways is to head to PowerFlex's website and um, we have an entire policy and incentives page where you can look by location, see what's out there, what's available, what might be reopening, what's currently closed, all of that information, a lot of what we discussed today. Um, and obviously with quick contact links to reach out to us if you get to a point where um, you wanna see how your, your potential project could fit those needs. We also have a policy newsletter that you could subscribe to um, that spreads updates about different policy changes as well as incentive um, grant funding opportunities that open up. So thank you, Emma. And did you mention that we also have one of our team members, Alex, who's on the line today um, that can help answer any questions that you have regarding our sales as well. Um, sorry, I broke out for a minute. So I'm glad I'm glad you were able to see that. Um, our last question that we have time for today is, are there particular industries that are prioritized for clean energy funding and incentives? Um, I can start off on this one and then I'll hand it over to Janelle and Emma to add on anything. I think this depends very much on the program. Um, some programs prioritize schools, others prioritize workplaces, others, as you saw, have very specific programs for fleets. Um, and so Janelle and Emma, if there's any trends that you'd like to point out in the San Diego market, I'll hand it over to y'all. Yeah, I think you could tell with a lot of the programs we covered that um, luckily a lot of programs are moving to a more uh, 
broad list of industries. So they're having offerings for fleets, for workplaces, for MUDs. Um, but even more so than that, um, at first glance, you may see a funding number that doesn't stand out to you just that much. But when you really look into it, I'm seeing a lot more of communities in charge, for example, if you're a multifamily dwelling, they're offering double the incentive, which you may not see just in passing. So, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities, even when it's these broad kind of industry-wide programs. Um, when you get down into the details and actual funding, they can really be offering um, more incentives for specific type of industries like MUDs, like fleets, and so forth. Yeah, that pretty much covers it too. One other trend, of course, that you've seen um, in the presentation, um, a lot of the programs, especially scg &E, Power Under Drive, um, heavy emphasis on underserved communities, disadvantaged communities um, for MS programs. Um, there's been a big trend towards that, receive more funding for those um, communities in particular. Um, but yeah, it pretty much covers it. Thank you. And what I'll add about disadvantaged and low-income communities is sometimes this is defined in different ways. Um, so depending on the utility you have, depending on the mapper that's used, there's different metrics from energy underserving to low income um, to, you know, schools. There's very different ways to measure what low income and disadvantaged means. So make sure that you contact us and we can tell you um, if your community is eligible for any of the disadvantaged and low income funding that's available. This is all the time that we had for questions, unfortunately. Um, for those of y'all whose questions we were not able to answer or that have very specific questions for your projects and for opportunities, please feel free to reach out to us at sales at powerflex.com um, and someone will be in touch with you shortly. And if you have any questions that we can help you with, feel free to reach out to Janelle, me, um, or Emma on LinkedIn as well. Thank y'all so much. And I'm going to stop sharing our screen and I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Thank you.